Right. This is uh, an interesting article I thought I would highlight and pass comment on. We've got a few pieces before we go into just one expose this week, which is a bit longer than most. And for years, the article said, armies have been using artificial intelligence to improve existing vehicles and pilots' reaction time and decision-making on the battlefield. For example, AI is used in the Mitsubishi X2 Shin Shin, which is the Japanese stealth fighter prototype that was built in 2016. And the onboard AI uses an array of sensors all over the aircraft to provide vital information about the status of every component and to determine the severity of any damage. The Russian military aircraft Sukhoi Su-57 also relies on AI, which constantly analyzes multiple, multiple parameters such as air quality and pressure to provide information on how to stabilize the aircraft that goes into a spin, as well as override any pilot maneuvers the system predicts could cause a crash. And until recently, they say, however, AI would only amplify human input. A soldier is still in the bottleneck of these systems, they say. Even something as simple as discharging a weapon takes more time when a person and not an automated AI-powered system is in charge. And these milliseconds of delay often mean the difference between victory and defeat, and world governments are keenly aware of it. But when will these people get it? No one wins in war. No one. Only child-level thinking makes you believe that. And there are no en enemies amongst the people themselves, by and large. The enemies are created by greed-based divide-and-conquer entities, always. Russia, China or Iran are not the enemy. A distinct lack of adult-based understanding is the real enemy and why wars unfold. And they said they want an edge over one another and the lack of international standards or legal documents governing the use of AI in combat systems certainly encourages such ambitions. And the result is the steady increase in incidents, both documented and undocumented, where lethal autonomous weapon systems or laws have been put to use. Laws. Oh, the irony of that acronym. And so we're back to the Talmudic laws again. But the they say history will remember March 2021 as the date of the first documented use of one such weapon. And a report commissioned by the United Nations claims that a military drone used in 2020 in Libya's civil war was unmanned and also autonomous. And it engaged militants during their retreat without requiring any input from a human operator. And in May 2021 20, marks the first use of a drone swarm in combat. In this incident, Israel Defense Forces targeted members of the Hamas organization unleashing a drone swarm to strike multiple enemy targets. And they said when using the phrase drone swarm, it is important to denote that this doesn't mean it's just multiple drones. In a true drone swarm, drones have the ability to make autonomous decisions based on information shared by other units in the vicinity. And the May 21st incident was just the beginning. A number of countries have already included drone, drone swarms in their arsenal and are integrating them in military operations. Needless to say, the US is a world leader in swarm technology. 
It started with a 2016 Perdix Swarm demo when a trio of F-A-18 Super Hornet fighter jets released more than 100 drones into the air. And it continued with DARPA X-61A Gremlin drones. Gremlin. They do like to give hints, don't they? Which were launched from a mothership cargo carrier. Demonstrating the carrier's functionality to launch and retrieve a great number of small, cheap and reusable drones. A mothership. Sounds like the delivery system of the direct energy weapons to me. Think about that. And who has motherships? <clears throat> Recent developments include kamikaze drone swarms and several swarm related projects that are part of DARPA's offensive swarm enabled tactics program called Offset. In reality land, they've been using drones in warfare long before 2021. The report went on to talk about robots on patrol, but it's not just the drones. There are intelligent robots too. Boston Dynamics Robot Spot is currently being used by Hawaii police to detect homeless who might be infected with COVID-19. So nice of them to use them against unfortunate and neglected people and not the criminals. In Singapore, robots already patrol the streets, relying on facial recognition software to police undesirable behaviour designated as not respecting social distancing, smoking or improperly parking bicycles. <laughs> social distancing. The death measurement. Smoking and not parking your bicycles correctly. Really. Whilst the triad and other Chinese rogue uh, mercenary groups cause all sorts of chaos. But social distance and smoking and not parking your bicycle is deemed more important, it seems. And they say, while some may find this normal and not problematic, it's easy to envision scenarios in which robots enforce not only social acceptable behaviour, but anything else they've been encoded with. And unleashing them on civilians creates a dystopian society in which AI-based enforcers ensure obedience without any human involvement. Like clowns in panic again. And like I have said, tech is only used to be weaponized against the people. Never or rarely used on the criminals. They portray to be after, but it's always the general people they target. And using drones against the homeless is particularly low. And that is why no one likes the police. And they have to see or be told what they are doing is not acceptable to we the people. And also remember that any technologies mentioned in this column, especially drone swarms, can and will most likely be used as a crowd control mechanism. Another reason why I don't fully like protests. Employing lethal and non-lethal countermeasures against anyone not complying with rules set down by increasingly authoritarian governments. And unlike human police officers and military personnel, AI has no feelings, no ethics, no sense of the value of human life. I would argue that police officers and military personnel are exactly like AI. 
because they have no feelings, no ethics, and no sense of value of human life either. AI can only process the data, and it reacts according to the sensory input and its algorithms, all of which are run by clown companies. And the article said AI is not perfect either. Not that the so-called authorities care. We've seen time and time again that AI makes mistakes. And in the future, these mistakes will likely cost lives as AI makes bad calls, targets friendlies, fires on civilians and worse. In the future, <laughs> uh, try now and the past. And yet again, it's warning of the future when it's happening now and the past. While engaging with the enemy, AI is likely to commit acts that would be deemed atrocities and breaches of international treaties since it lacks the capacity to understand context and interpret situations in a way that leave room for interpretation and adherence to complex laws and the customs of war. It, like the farmer and death jab companies, will likely carry an indemnity clause. It is how the psychopaths work, or use the Day of Atonement, and for everything else, cite national security to get their army of shekel law people to avoid prosecution, or do technicalities bullshit, like with Prince Andrew. But he said, finally, there's a scalability as a threat, and many of these machines, especially drones, are incredibly cheap to produce and proliferate, especially at a large scale. And this alone makes them disproportionately more powerful than many weapons currently available in conventional military arsenals. But it also turns them into an unpredictable element on the battlefield, one that can escalate international conflicts in a way that could push countries on the receiving end to consider last resort tactics, including the reintroduction of weapons of mass destruction. But why before each piece of dangerous technology is the UN or other so-called authority groups not calling for a global symposium that includes representatives of we the people. Why is it we never have a say in these things? And we have to accept incompetent child-level, zero oversight and frankly dangerous opinions and plans. Because we the people have not created a platform previously. Now we have with the TPC and it's time for us to push on and create that seat at the table. Standing up to laws and it's said there has been considerable pushback against laws and the site stopkillerrobots.org is run by a coalition of non-governmental organisations that seek to preemptively ban lethal autonomous weapons and the Future of Life Institute is another outreach organisation which among other hot topics of our age tackles laws, ethical uses of AI and other issues that was discussed in this article. And finally even the UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez says that machines with the power and discretion to take lives without human involvement, are politically unacceptable, morally repugnant, and should be prohibited by international law. And he said, make no mistake, though this pushback has done little to stop what's called the arms race in autonomy. Now, although the UN has voiced its disdain for the laws multiple times, and the US, Chinese, Russian and German military and several others have stated that creation of laws isn't their objective, the truth is that the technology is already here and likely to pro proliferate. 
And these kind of weapons provide an edge that armed forces of the world simply cannot ignore. And the same goes for using laws in a civilian setting. As during times when governments vie for more complete control, any device or weapon that facilitates that kind of control is more than welcome and laws definitely fit the bill. But as demonstrated in Honolulu and Singapore, we're already seeing some innocuous applications of AI that are setting the stage for more elaborate setups. Robots policing our streets, fighting our wars. That's one thing I'm not particularly looking forward to, said the article. And then it asked these questions. What about you? What's your stance on laws? What do you think about the future of warfare? And how do autonomous weapon systems fit in? Now these are the type of things a future TPC panel should be addressing. A standing platform for and by the people. We have all heard some shit in these past two years. But this may well take the biscuit. As mentioned earlier, it is staggering, in some cases frightening, as to what is going on in our schools. And not just in America either. A Stockholm University student has written an essay on racism of milk against coffee. And the student from the, the Stockholm University received praise for writing an essay on the bizarre subject. The 27-year-old Arvid Hag wrote an essay entitled Black and White Drinks that contained an account of what happened in the early 20th century in the struggle between coffee and milk. And the essay belonged to a subject called Critical Whiteness Studies, which states that white people are racists. And the study is supported by the new left-wing group that is currently attracting attention across the United States. And according to a report published in Freer Tider, Hogg explained in his essay the effect of marketing on black coffee, as, as they have characterised it by highlighting the black and exotic elements. And when it comes to white milk, the local and white have always been emphasised. Now in Sweden, courses in critical whiteness studies started a year ago and the Expo founder Tobias Hubernet has been a pioneer in the subject at Karlstad University. Now Tobias is Asian. Does anyone ask why an Asian is dictating school policies in a predominantly white country? And before anyone says that is racist, do me a favour and GFY. And go and do your research of how many whites are in the roles of policy making or politicians in any non-white country. The answer is, it doesn't happen. There is no whites even in the fake white country called Israel. And why is it that whites have to accept this multiculturalism? Because it only works one way. And multiculturalism is a designed attack on white people only, as was political correctness. If it wasn't, then all things would be equal. But can you imagine the uproar if a white person went into the Chinese government and started speaking about the Uyghurs problem? Or a white person went into the Israeli Stasi government building and started spouting revisionist rhetoric about the Palestinians? Has it happened? No. So that means multiculturalism is designed solely as an attack on the white people. 
and the student says that coffee with milk is drink-based colonisation. And the distance course named Critical Whiteness Perspectives on Nordic Culture was held and the 27-year-old applied for the course. And at the end of the course, all the participants were asked to write a paper of 10,000 characters. Harger said, I took a rather bizarre subject, which is quite fun, and took another turn. Actually, it's not fun. And he wrote, the question one may ask is whether it is really a reconciliation between milk and coffee that has occurred, or whether adding milk to the coffee is a way to take away coffee's unique properties and instead impose white properties on the black drink. And he called it drink-based colonisation, stressing that milk controls and domesticates coffee. However, when the essay went for correction, it received a B grade or very good. And the course coordinator also added remarks saying that it was an exciting topic and lauded Hag for having creative thinking and suggested that the text should be expanded into a longer essay. I've heard it all now. Like I said at the beginning, the levels of stupidity now is reaching way beyond epic proportions. And this is what happens when you see. I said it would look ugly. It is. But it is better to see and recognise than remain as, remain as blind as a bat. Despite having eyes, what is the point of these people having eyes when they can't see anything outside of their programmes? And here's some adult-based thinking for you based on this programme. Do the people implementing this think that guilt and shaming children for things that other people did over a hundred years ago, is that helping their development? Is creating hatred and division between the children, is that helping their development? Thank you.